In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today is a great day for the church. It's a beautiful day. It may be cloudy, but it's a beautiful day in here as we gather as a people of faith in worship and in recognition of a God who loves each and every one of us and walks with us and leads us and guides us. And we're privileged to have with us several guests. Deacon Joe Rakasava is just ordained a deacon recently. Deacon Olindo is with me here at the Shrine, the business manager, as well as my classmates who are ordained. Two weeks ago, Father Sam Jutras, and just yesterday with me, Father Bill Gabriel, Father Alexander Contreras, Bob Gassetto, Michael Hughes, and our provincial Father Michael DiRigorio, as well as two other classmates, Brother David Relstab and Brother Michael Riggs, Augustinians with me, Augustinian brothers, fathers, and my family, and all of you. So thank you for being here. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries in which we celebrate a God who comes to us and is there with us in our time of need, let us call to mind those areas of our lives where we need God's help, those areas of our lives where we need help trusting in God, and those areas of our lives where we need God's help to go and announce the good news to the world around us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have been, and the creatures of the world are wholesome. And there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth. For justice is undying, for God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his goodwill. At nightfall weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued. And have pity on me, O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing, O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, May you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief when you are burdened, but as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that they may be equal equality. 
as it is written, whoever had much, not have more. And whoever had little, did not have less. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark Glory to you, Lord. when jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him saying, my daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, be not afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who are with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talithia kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have a nephew who recently turned four years of age and his mom took him to Kings Island, a uh, amusement park right outside of my hometown in Cincinnati. And when he gets to the park, he sees the roller coasters and the games and the water and he's just filled with joy. And he looks up at his mom and he says, spreads out his arms and he says, I can't believe this is my life. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's the way I feel this morning. 
as I'm gathered with family, I'm gathered with my Augustinian brothers, and I'm gathered with so many friends, and all of you here at the shrine in this beautiful place this morning. This morning I find myself looking up to God and saying, I can't believe that this is my life. I wonder if eventually Jairus learned to say that after he encountered Jesus in the way that he did in the Gospel. After all, in today's Gospel, he's at probably the lowest point of his life. He got the worst news that a loving parent could ever receive. Your daughter has died. And to make it worse, the community around him goes up to him and says, your daughter is dead. Why trouble Jesus anymore? But he clings. And in that moment, probably the lowest moment in his life, Jesus says, be not afraid. Have faith. But have faith in what? Faith that he would raise his daughter from the dead? Faith in an eternal life? Jesus doesn't say. He just says, you've got to have faith. As I'll share a little more at our event on Wednesday night, I and many of my brothers have been preparing for ordination for six, seven years, some longer. And there were many times in those six years where I didn't think I was going to make it, and probably others were with me in that thinking. Before I even entered, I had no idea how somebody who was older, I was 34 at the time, could enter. It was so abnormal in terms of age. And then I was like, how do I give up a house and a career and a life that I really am enjoying to answer this call? And then a group of people surrounded me, good friends, some Augustinians, and they said, look to the God who's with you in this decision. If you're called to it, God will make a way. And God made a way beyond my own understanding. Then in the first year, my brother died. And I had no idea how I could continue with all that grief, let alone support my family and theirs, and keep up with the demands of seminary life. And my Augustinian brothers surrounded me, my family surrounded me, my friends surrounded me, and they said, God brought you here, God will provide a way. And God made a way beyond my understanding at the time. And in the same way, a couple years after that, my parents were both diagnosed with very serious illnesses. I thought I'd have to leave to go get a job and make money to support them. And once again, my community, my friends, my family, and then parishioners came to me and they said, look to God who's right here. He will make a way, and he made a way beyond my own understanding at the time. The God we believe in, the God we worship this morning, is a God who's there when things seem broken beyond repair because he sees healing beyond our belief, our own understanding. What we see is not all we get when God is at our side. He brings something so much bigger. And he says, just have faith, even though we don't know exactly what that faith is going to lead us to. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that? I believe everybody here has a story in my short tenure here as a deacon, I've gotten to know so many lovely stories. Stories that inspired me. Inspires, inspired me to become the deacon that I was called to be and now the priest that I'm called to be. And I think my classmates would agree they've had similar experiences. Everyone has a story to tell. But what good is a story if we don't share it? We all have stories of how God has shown up in our lives. If you don't know one right off the top of your head, think of the last time you found a parking spot in South Philly. <laughs> right? Maybe some of you had some answered prayers this morning. Thank God St. Rita shared her story. We come here to this beautiful shrine, this beautiful place, with other people that believe in a loving God just like we do. 
and we find inspiration as we think about all the ways that God worked in her life because she dared to tell her story. The way that God was there when her husband was tragically murdered and she reckons she dealt with the, the duty, the calling to forgive rather than seek revenge. She told the story of how God was there when her two children died, leaving her all alone in the world. She told the story of how God was there when she was rejected from the convent initially and it seemed like her dream had been shattered. She told the story of how God worked in her life and we get to come here to this beautiful place to find inspiration because if God worked that way in her life, we know God can work that way in ours too. And we find peace as we present our own difficult situations to the Lord that is there. We trust them in faith, just as Jairus is asked to do. We trust them in faith, and then we have hope in the fact that this powerful woman, this incredible saint, this remarkable woman of faith, is up there interceding on our behalf to the God who sees healing beyond belief when things for us seem broken beyond repair. We come here to find peace, and we do find it. I know that from your stories, and that's why I'm so happy to have been assigned here to be with each and every one of you in this ministry. But we're also sent to share peace, to create peace, to share the peace we find here with people who see life as nothing but broken beyond repair, because we know better. We know we worship a God who sees something so much bigger than what we sometimes see. I can't imagine my priesthood without my story. I can't imagine exercising that, and I can't imagine this wonderful shrine full of faith without yours. Who are we going to share our story with today? Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's hard. But we know God is with us as we do, as he is with those people that we're going to point him out to. And that's the beauty of the Eucharist. The Lord comes to us today in our music, in the readings, in the word, in the homily, in each other, but most especially in the Blessed Sacrament, the Eucharist that we are so honored to receive today, together, where we're united more closely with the God who heals us and reconciles us, and we're united more closely with each other in our calling to go and share. God is the way maker. He's the miracle worker. He's the promise keeper. He's the light in the dark. Do we see him? And are we willing to share that good news with others? As we receive the Eucharist today, we approach the altar, we approach with our stories, we approach with the gifts that God has given us, and we also approach with our needs. God draws us in and then sends us out. As we approach the altar today to receive the presence of our God who heals us and loves us, hopefully we will do so with open arms and we will say like my nephew, I can't believe this is my life that I get to receive God in this way and to share this faith with so many people. Saint Rita, pray for us. having been nourished by the Word of God. Let us now profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers, we have been drawn into two moving healing miracles of Jesus in which he shows compassion to the young and to the older. We pray for Pope Francis, who will celebrate the feast of St. Peter on Tuesday, that he may continue to be a worthy successor of him, holding the church together in unity with truth and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, who will celebrate the 70th anniversary of his ordination as a priest on Tuesday, that God will look kindly upon him, sustain his health, and give him the consolation of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our newly ordained Augustinian friars, Father Jeremy Hires, Father Alessandro Contreras, and Father Bill Gabriel, that the Lord will fill them with his wisdom and grace as they begin their service to God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Lebanon as Pope Francis gathers the Christian leaders, Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant from that land together on next Thursday to pray together for the gift of peace and stability for a troubled region. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the Father's Day Novena, which we remember especially today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers and the petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, we sing psalms to you, we who love you, and we give thanks to your holy name. For you listen to us, have shown pity to us, and help us in all our needs. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord,
Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of, Mo of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Augustine, St. Monica, St. Rira, St. Thomas of Villanova, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. It hardly seems possible that Father Jeremy has been a priest for not even 24 hours yet. He celebrates like a veteran. Well done, Father. Thank you. As he has led us in offering prayer of thanksgiving to God, i sure I speak on behalf of all of you in offering our thanks to him for the way in which he has responded so generously to God's invitation and has allowed himself 
to become an instrument of God's continuous presence and healing in the lives of God's people. I speak also on behalf of my Augustinian brothers here present or not present in offering not only our hearty congratulations, but our pledge of support and fraternity to you as you continue to exercise this gift of ministry on behalf of all of us for the good of the church. The ministry that we have been gifted with uh, is a ministry that operates in consort with the various gifts that God has given to his church. And I think that's something that Father Jeremy understands very well, that as a priest he is among you, that he is one with you, especially here at St. Rita's Shrine and in these initial years of his priestly ministry in order to continue what Jesus began, to bring the news of the gospel into our lives in a way that's ever more concrete and visible. In the 200 and plus years of the presence of Augustinians in the United States, we've never had a Father Jeremy. <laughs> Another indication of your uniqueness among us and so we're ready for surprises. Uh, and I'm sure that from what we have seen during these six and seven years of your formation, uh, those surprises will be very beneficial and good ones that we earnestly look forward to. So once again, thank you, Father Jeremy. God bless you in your ministry. May you give much because you know you have been given much. Now it's time for the second homily. <laughs> you didn't know there's two at a first Mass of Thanksgiving, did you? No, just a few words of thanks, and I really dislike listing thank yous because you always leave somebody out. So if you feel left out, please, I beg you for your forgiveness. But this is a list of some of the highlights that I owe for today. First of all, I would like to thank our altar servers and my classmates and brothers who can celebrated with me today on this special occasion. I would like to thank Father Michael Hughes especially. The chalice that I used today was his chalice. And this is a story that uh, will be in a third homily sometime soon. <laughs> but it's a gift from a mentor to me so that I can perpetuate something from his priesthood in mine. So thank you, Father Michael. I'd also like to thank my formators that have been with me on this six-year journey, Father Joe Mastardi and Father Kevin Mullins. Father Joe has been with me five out of the six years and was with me through a lot of those challenges or hurdles that I mentioned, and he was pointing out the presence of Christ along the way. And also Father Jim Paradis, who was my novice master, and now we get to work here together at the Shrine. I would like to thank my parents, my siblings, my friends that are here with us today. I wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank you. My Augustinian brothers, thank you for all the support you've given me. I look forward to working with you in this new capacity and being of assistance, where Sam, wherever I can be. And the Shrine Director, Mr. Jonathan Jerome, all the wonderful people here at the Shrine, thank you for all the work you put into planning this event for us, this gathering, so thank you for that. And of course, the choir. You know, the music director, Michael Sheeran, asked me, do you have any songs? And I said, my judgment would be so far inferior to yours. And I was so right. That was just beautiful. Let's please give them a round of applause. <laughs> I 
And I'd like to point out Brother Michael Riggs, who's uh, the third for today. He'll be in the Philadelphia area next year, so he'll probably be in some capacity here at the Shrine. So I wanted to take the moment to introduce him before he's formally introduced and welcomed. But you will see this lovely face. And he's very talented, so welcome, Michael. And then last, but certainly not least, all of you. I meant to mention this in the first homily, so I'll mention it in the second. Every ordination, my diaconate and my priesthood ordination, I had a list of people that I've been keeping the past six years that have supported me in some way along the way, whether it was friendship, prayer, monetary support, or any number of things. There's many people not on this list, but it's almost 200 names now. And the list is quite bulky. It's four pages, and it's a nice reminder when it's sitting in your pocket because it's heavy of all the people that are involved in producing a vocation. People, unlike the community in the Gospel today, who point out the presence of Christ to the person journeying through it. So thank you to all of you. Give yourselves a round of applause as well as the people on this list. Please, thank you. (laughs) 